Welcome to the program Sharing Your Vision. Today we have a very yes. special guest. He is from Kenya and he is Pastor Emmanuel Kuta. Welcome, Pastor. I'm also happy to get this privilege to share with you. Thank you. Can we talk a little bit uh, about your country? Here in Kenya, we have uh, different cultures of 42 tribes. And uh, each and every tribe believe in different things. But because of Christianity, we, we are happy, are now knowing the truth. And as a pastor in Kenya, uh, we have many, many things to accomplish in Kenya. Uh, Kenya being a third world country, but you know, we, we thank God because it is through prayer that things are working well. The atmosphere is good. Political atmosphere is good. Uh, we have different activities which we are doing here in Kenya that help, to, uh, help our people to earn a living. Many depend on farming and small-scale farming, whereby you find that uh, People grow crops in small farms and whatever they get, it can't sustain them because they, 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 have, they don't have that power or they're not, they're not economically well. So they, they plant, for example, we plant maize of which they lack fertilizer. Even some they don't have enough seeds to plant so you find that there's poor harvesting and that leads to hunger that's why you find uh, many, many many children they die many families they are they, they have poor health because there's not there is lack of food when there is lack of food it means that the health of the people is going to deteriorate so that is the challenges we are facing as as a country. Pastor. Yes. Where is Kenya located? For people that do not know. Uh, okay. Kenya is in East Africa. Where we have Kenya, Uganda and Tanzania. So we are neighbor to Tanzania. Nepal to Uganda, Nepal to Sudan, Nepal to Ethiopia. We are along Indian Ocean. Pastor, yes. what influenced you? And I believe uh, you, your father is a bishop. What, yes. what, in, what influenced you to start in the ministry? I thank God. Because my father, as a bishop, he raised me in a Christian way. And I was able to stick to the word of God. Uh, then when I came to my senses, I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal savior. And I decided to enter into the ministry to preach the gospel as it is a command in the book of Matthew where Jesus was commissioning his disciples to go into the whole world to preach the gospel. So that is the call I received and that's why I'm doing the ministry right now. I want to ask you, how do you combine the secular work from the Christian work that you do? The Christian work, we have time to do evangelism. We have time for prayers. We have time for meetings. We have time for conferences. And we have time where we do prayer and fasting. Then there is time where we visit these widows, orphans, and other people who are in need to serve them, to show them humility, that we really love them with the love of Jesus Christ. 
Pastor, how do families receive the help? Do they get encouraged to go in the Christian or Christianity sector rather than just staying where they are? So where I've seen fruitful fruits in this ministry as we visit them, because when you reach to some houses, you find them, they, even they don't have anything. So when you minister them by giving them something, food, maize, they feel that love and they also decide that these are the things which they, they are found in the kingdom of God. You have showed them the love. So they decide to accept Jesus, Jesus Christ and follow and they come to church and we have seen the number increasing because through that administration yes pastor um how is the church in kenya uh, is there a lot of churches or is it a small section of people or is it is it growing in kenya we have different categories of churches we have mega churches we have small churches Mega churches, these are churches which are found in, in, in big cities where we have rich people living there. So they construct different big buildings. But now our heart is to reach people in the rural village where they, they don't have anything. So we start by worshiping even in a tree. Then with the time, you, we construct churches using mud. Then they grow slowly as they contribute small amount of money, the little they have to build a, 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 a permanent church. So that's the situation. But even now we have those who are worshiping under the tree, but they focus on the Lord, Jesus Christ. Yes. Wonderful. Very happy to hear that. And I wanted to ask you, you, what is your future? What do you, or what would you like as far as um, what the future holds for your church, for your ministry? I have a vision to have a big church where people will come together. They worship the Lord without being interrupted by the rain. I have a vision to have a, a school for now, we have some few children whom we are supporting as a church, but we have taken them to, to, to other schools. We have the school called Hope and Light. We have taken them there. We are trying to pay for them the little amount we have so that they can continue with their education. As a church, I have a vision to have a good school for these kids where they can come and learn from class to the university so that they can have a bright future. They can enjoy their life. I have a vision to have a hospital where these kids, when they are sick, and the people around the community, when they are sick, they can come and be treated so that they can have good health. And also, I have a vision for the Bible ministry. Many pastors are illiterate. They have not gone to Bible school. So they, they preach out of ignorance. It is good to have knowledge so that when they come to the Bible school, they will learn, they will acquire knowledge, which will help them to run the ministry and I shall be happy to see that the churches are growing because these pastors will be equipped with the word of God. So right now, the needs I have, we are praying for the Lord, is that we can get uh, the piece of land for the school, for the hospital, for the Bible school. And I know God is going to provide so that these people may come and enjoy the goodness of the Lord. Pastor, is it difficult to buy land in Kenya? Yeah, 
in Kenya, we have land. It's not difficult as long as you have the resources. The problem is the lack of resources. But if you have the resources, if we have money right now, land is available. Yes, it's not a long process buying land in Kenya. I can say that uh, it's not uh, that much expensive because uh, one, one, one hectare of land, it costs around 800,000 Kenyan shillings. That is 8,000 US dollars. Do you get to go to yes. the city? Do you get to go to the city? Uh, Sometimes I do travel because of different functions, meeting, conferences, trainings. Yes. Someone that's watching and listening to you, Pastor, how can yes. they reach you to be able to send you donations or contact you um, to see how they can help? Uh, they can reach me through this email for information, any question they have. E double M K U T A at gmail dot com or they can reach me through WhatsApp number two fifty four seven two eight ten seventy eight one. They will get me. I'm available, then we can discuss and answer any question they have wonderful pastor i'm glad that you share your contact information what message you. can you share uh to our audience the ones that get to watch and the ones that get to listen what message of hope can you share what the bible says pure religion and undefiled before god and the father is this to feast the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unsupported from the world i would love to encourage them that it is good to put your neighbor your friend before you many people are concentrating on personal interest but remember the word of god it is saying that pure religion, what is that pure? The religion that that person is going to visit the people, the widows, the orphans. These are the people who are hopeless. They don't hope, have hope in life. So when God has blessed you, it means that you need to be a blessing to these people. Then you are going to do great work. So I want to tell them that let them continue to have hope in the Lord because when they practice what God has called them to do, they are not going to concentrate on other things, but they are going to focus to bring a solution to other people. When you bring a solution to another person, God is going to bring a solution to you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Yes. It's been wonderful having you here and sharing your vision and also the vision of helping people that are in so much need of just the simplest yes. things. And I love what you're doing. I love uh, your prayer to the Lord to help you build this school, this hospital, the church. And I'm glad yes. that we are a platform that can help uh, share the information to all who are listening and viewing that they can yes. lend a helping hand and like you said uh, in the Bible as well but not look upon your benefit but rather help those that are in need and we want to thank all of you for listening and viewing our program every week there is a cry for help if you are in a position that you can help 
or you would like to help, the pastor's information will be on screen. And also we are uh, OVM Radio, we're a platform that if you need to reach us to be able to reach to him, then we'll be glad to serve. Thank you so much and we'll see you on the next edition of Sharing Your Vision.